Hello friends, this is Chrissy at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Today I'm sharing resources and shelf work activities used in our human body unit study. Sharing a little backstory on how this unit came to be. Bella, my six-year-old, broke her ulna and radius bone at the end of summer. She physically ended summer with a bang, and that ignited her interest in studying all about the human body. Talk about child-led learning. This set of organ cards is actually a printable freebie, and you can find all of the links um, in the description box down below and I paired this with the Safari LTD tubes organ set And this is actually one of our favorite tubes sets that we own uh, This is for an objective picture match activity and also just great for vocabulary or language uh, a hands-on way of uh, learning those organ names and this vocabulary strip card is from the good and the beautiful human body unit study curriculum the skeletal system chart is also a printable from the good and the beautiful uh, human body unit study curriculum which you will see uh, shortly here but uh, once we are through with a lesson so this was from the skeletal system lesson I believe it was lesson number two uh, if there is an activity that I can turn into a tray and just extend the life of that then um, I do like to do that so that's what I did here for a labeling activity this is the human body part one unit study for grades K through six by the good and the beautiful. And this is the spine of our human body unit. You can see here in the table of contents that it's broken down into 10 lessons, including the intro. Now we do not finish this from cover to cover. I tapped out um, about how many lessons that I knew realistically we would get through in about a month's uh, span of time. And in the future, maybe next school year, we'll come back and cover the lessons that we did not get to this time around. So here's an overview of what you will see in this entire unit in each lesson. So there's a science journal, a science vocabulary card, uh, projects, read alouds and further resources for older kids you get uh, supplies needed for every project uh, suggestion and then optional read aloud story books for different levels There's the same layout to just about every lesson. So this is lesson two, the skeletal system. And one of the objectives is uh, learning the vocabulary words. And again, these are the vocabulary um, cards or strips that I mentioned, and you are suggested to create a science wall with those vocabulary words. Then there's preparation, like preparing all of the printables or mini readers um, that are included with each lesson. The optional read aloud, and then there is actually instructing the lesson, which is given to you verbatim. So with each lesson, you are prompted about two to three hands-on uh, demonstrations or projects. Um, the skeletal system chart, which you guys already saw, um, is one of them in this lesson. Another one was building a body using Play-Doh uh, and how the body cannot stand without bones, right? Um, here there's more on the science wall and adding new vocabulary words. Our next uh, project was a model of the spine and they do supply you with a materials list and even optional supplies if you cannot find their first set of suggested supplies, along with a picture of what your project should look like. And finally, every lesson ends with a science journal and suggestions for additional research for older children. 
you're provided with a science journal uh, worksheet for each lesson um, and then once you complete them all you can just uh, bind together a human body science journal and I just keep one as my master copy and I continue to make more as needed and these are just some of the examples uh, from Noah who is five Luna who is two and Bella who is six just in case you're wondering, we cover one lesson per week because each lesson does entail about two to three activities or projects, plus the read-alouds, plus the science journals. That is more than enough work to keep us busy for a week. I want to show you some of the prep work that goes into these unit studies. So here are all of the vocabulary cards uh, for every lesson and I just store those in the back of our binder along with a few readers included in the unit that you'll need to prep as well. Indescribable 100 Devotions About God and Science is one of my most favorite resources that we used in this unit. You can see here all of my blue sticky tabs I marked for devotionals uh, to tie that into our lessons uh, in the good and the beautiful. Um, so we read we're all in this together, which the science part to it is on cells. And we read this during our immune system uh, lesson. The devotional, uh, the spin on that is that we're all a cell in the body of Christ, right? So show me what job you need me to do. I just love that. One of the biggest reasons why we personally homeschool is so that we can put Christ front and center of our lives in everything that we do, including education. And this devotional just ties that science portion in beautifully, not just in the human body, but in all sorts of science related topics. This fingerprint fact card is part of the Good and the Beautiful unit study. And I used it as an introductory activity to the unit. It reads, one of the physical evidences of God's individual creation of each of us is in our intricate fingerprints. To put a hands-on take on this, I paired it with an ink pad and the scraps of watercolor paper we had from a previous art project. The idea is to make handmade note cards and bookmarks with our fingerprints. Another resource we used often is our Spanish curriculum. This was sent to us by family in South America, Colombia to be exact. And there is a good section in here um, of worksheets I was able to tie into the human body unit. So both Spanish and science logged in one is a win for me. And I use this as a master copy, again, just photocopying uh, how many ever worksheets I need out of it. First Encyclopedia of the Human Body by Usborne, and now this one I really did enjoy. I The images are still digital, but I do like that it's a combination of nonfiction and fiction. Um, so here you can see all sorts of um, topics on the human body, and again, we just use this as a reference book depending on the lesson that we were studying that that week and just really colorful um, enough factual information for my young children um, this one i do recommend mm -hmm. 
Investigating Me is a thrift store find and probably one of my favorite finds so far. So there's a short informational passage to each topic. This one is about posture. And I'm following there is an activity or exercise using your body to physically explore and comprehend posture. So here is a spread and exercise for vision. Uh, there's nerve networks, super brain, just lots and lots of fun. Next is an activity book, and you guys know how often I use these in our unit studies. Uh, my kids just really learn a lot from these type of activity books. Uh, so this one here specifically, Bare Bones, Your Skeleton. So we did this try at home project suggestion you see in the blue bubble there. And that was to create a skeleton uh, using Q-tips as bones and then labeling those bones. Uh, this is a coloring by bones same concept as a color by number the book covers several topics and body systems so we were able to i was able to tab each uh, body system out and reference it back to correspond to whatever lesson we were covering in the good and the beautiful for example uh, during our immune system week or lesson uh, there's a project uh, suggestion in here using glitter to represent germs we poured it all over our hands outside and we touched different surfaces um, and that represented how our germs are left everything on everything we touch right and then we washed our hands with just water and we saw that germs cannot be washed off with just water you need to use soap and warm water. So just a lot of fun, hands-on activities in that activity book. We do a lot of coloring in our household and you guys have uh, seen our collection of Dover coloring books. We absolutely love them. Um, and we use coloring for opening activities during read alouds. If my kid just wants some one-on-one -on -one time with me, I'll sit down for five, 10 minutes and color with them. Um, they're great for on the go for like doctor's appointments and sport practice for uh, the older uh, siblings. And again, we just love this series of coloring books it's not kiddish but it's not um, like an adult skilled coloring book either and there is a little bit of educational information in each coloring book as well and so that really sits well with me a uh, human body themed word search and i like this one specifically because the print is big so it makes it beginner friendly although bella did need my assistance through this the first few times and i did add it to a dry erase sleeve so that she can pick it up multiple times and getting better at it each time she did this is a little wooden body systems puzzle from Target Bullseye from a year or two back. I have been hoarding it for a while because I knew we'd have an upcoming unit uh, on the human body. So there's three pieces to each body system to puzzle together and on the back there is some information on that body system. Our next tray is actually uh, a printable board game, and this is Journey Through the Germs. And this was included in the immune system lesson from The Good and the Beautiful. I made it into a tray because the kids wanted to play this over and over. So first you read through this reader book to um, learn all of the facts uh, that you'll need to know uh, to play the game. So they learned about blood cells, different types of pathogens like viruses, bacteria, um, and the concept of the game is simple. So you choose a game piece, for us that's pom-poms, you draw a card and move forward or back the number of spaces indicated on the card you pulled. Whoever uh, makes it to the end first wins. And then throughout the journey, when you land on a certain spot, you're prompted to answer a question um, that is in that immune systems lesson uh, based on what you've read in the reader. This is a magnetic skeleton labeling puzzle. So perfect for a dry erase easel 
or your refrigerator door of course you can just lay it out on the floor uh, so the pieces are big like child life size big and it this is just lots of fun um, my kids learned so much with this resource and they pulled it off the shelf daily even my toddler learned um, some skeleton bone names so when your two-year-old knows what a pelvis or what your ribs are what an ulna or radius bone is I mean that's a wonderful thing and says a lot about the resource so this is a printed and free version of that skeleton labeling puzzle um, so essentially this is just a puzzle for the child to build uh, or piece together but you can easily create your own labels um, with the bone names and go ahead and label this uh, puzzle piece as well this is life-size this is really big the kids really enjoyed it and it kept them engaged for a while Operation Board Game, a childhood classic for me, although still a bit difficult for my young ones. The pieces you do have to retrieve are very small. It was still nice to just have and play together as a family. Something that brings my teens and my littles together um, is big for me, so we enjoyed this. On our shelf work, I always prepare a few fun activities for my toddler. Uh, this is how I keep her involved in our unit studies. And this is just using Halloween supplies from Dollar Tree. Uh, so it's a transferring activity, uh, transferring the eyeballs from one bowl to the next uh, with a skeleton arm. Creepy, yes, but definitely appropriate for our human body unit. A doctor's kit and a baby for my toddler to play pretend and role play. Uh, I did have a brand new box of band-aids in here and she blew through the entire box in just a few hours. A Play-Doh dentist kit that as you can see my toddler well loved and beat up. Uh, so it includes uh, several tools to play pretend dentist. A math tray for my toddler and preschooler, one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, placing the appropriate amount of teeth on each mouth. And behind that is a roll and cover for number identification and one-to-one -one correspondence. I do like to use the big dry erase uh, dice for my toddler. This is a uh, cardboard puzzle and this was a great resource for my six-year-old as it did take a bit more skill. So the outer uh, portion, you're to match the body part uh, image to its name. So here we have a skull matching to the word skull. And this is great for vocabulary. Uh, so there's brain, eyes, nose, uh, tooth, all types of different body parts. A project suggestion in the Good and the Beautiful Lesson 5, the circulatory system, is to make a blood model. So a representation of what blood might look like if it were blown up in size. So the red hot represent the red blood cells. Mini marshmallows represent the white blood cells. Oats represent platelets. And vegetable oil represents plasma.